Guys, it's finally time to talk about everyone's favorite Californication character, Rebecca Moody. Or maybe not? To say that Becca is a divisive character amongst the fan base would be the very definition of a gross understatement. With most people holding umbrage from everything from her physical looks to her overly mature outlook during the early seasons of Californication. But let me tell you a secret. Becca was actually my favorite character outside of Hank during the earlier seasons, in particular seasons 1 through 3. She had a very difficult role to play as the anchor in this absolutely wild narrative, and I think she handled that role quite brilliantly. So let's dive into Rebecca Moody and her character in Californication and why some love her, some hate her, but mostly I think she's just maybe a touch over hated and underappreciated by most fans of the show. Before we start, I'd like to give a real quick shout out to everybody that's been watching and interacting with these new Californication essays and breakdowns. And as a reminder, we are on the road to 1000 subscribers, so make sure you subscribe for future Californication content and let me know what future video essays you'd like to see down in the comments below. Becca, Becca, Becca. The adolescent offspring of Karen and Hank and the pint-sized foundation that effortlessly keeps her parents in check throughout the series. We get to see her young and spry start as a high school student all the way into the blossoming of her as a full-blown woman on her way to the altar for marriage. Played in a brilliant and often deadpan manner by Madeline Martin, she consistently brings a level of depth and emotion to her performance that always manages to hit the right notes on both an emotional and at times absolutely brutal level. I think this is funny. Do you see anyone laughing? I'm so sick and tired of you showing up out of nowhere and fucking with our lives. Like somehow you know better. You make a mess and then you waltz off like you've done something noble. But we have to clean up after you. Let this be a lesson to you, Dad. Stay the fuck away. And it's apparent I'm seemingly very much in a minority when it comes to this train of thought, but let's break it down a bit more in depth. Can she be annoying at times? Sure. Can she be a bit too quippy at times and too much of a smartass right when our characters need it the least? Sure. But in the end, she is a product of her environment as we'll explore throughout this analysis. So let's go over some quick facts regarding Californication's raven-haired maven. When we meet Becca, she is caught in a pretty tricky situation with her parents' recent separation and her mother's impending shock and wedding with the dial tone. <laughs> From her first screen appearance, she's shown to be as quippy, articulate and as sifo as both of her parents, if not without a slightly dark sense of humor and a surefire monotone to accompany most statements she makes. Wise beyond her years, she's a perfect combination of Hank's sardonic nature married with Karen's beauty in her later years. But I think the thing I always like the most about Becca is that she's a living embodiment of all of Hank and Karen's failures and triumphs as two people who, whilst undoubtedly being modern day star-crossed lovers, don't always do an exceptional job in the parenting department. Like most of us, Becca's a distillation of our parents, all the good, all the bad, and all the parts of us that we wish they weren't exposed to. And that's the thing about being a parent, we never have a perfect formula regarding which aspects of us our children will adopt in the future, and we can only hope is some of our more noble and honorable traits, and well, not this. You're messing up Charlie's place. Yes, of course, I'll clean it up. Am I sorry for throwing a killer party and having an awesome time? Absolutely. Becca is represented with the level of maturity and worldliness almost unheard of for most teenagers. Listen man, my son turns 12 next month and I couldn't ever fathom him speaking to this depth or having this level of observation regarding the world and those who occupy it. And I think that this is one of her primary character traits that most people tend to absolutely love or hate. This level of maturity seems to call for a certain level of suspension of belief within the viewing audience and many fans of the show have found this to be a very hard pill to swallow. But actually I always had the exact opposite train of thought. Her maturity likely stems from being forced to grow up a bit too fast due to the fast living and dalliances of both her parents. And let's be honest, well mostly Hank, it's clear to see that this is easily the most defining relationship throughout her characters in the show. And now that the relationship with Karen is frosty, throughout the series with some exceptions it is more akin to a traditional mother daughter relationship. And outside of Becca being the only one in the room to bring Karen back to reality regarding Hank on numerous occasions, she doesn't nearly have to do as much parenting to Karen as she does with Hank. It's more of an occasional reality check than a full-blown intervention. As the show rolls on, the Becca and Hank dynamic is easily the beating heart of Californication and I think that hits its apex in season 3. This is where series writers were smart to include some of the adverse effects of being raised in a solo household by Mr. Hank Moody. The season opens up with her getting caught doing some light experimentation with the smoking of the magic dragon. And while this isn't necessarily a cataclysmic event, it does show that Becca seems to be leaning more into the Hank school of thought as opposed to her mother, and this tied with her teenage angst makes for a potent cocktail of heated arguments and questionable decision making from this point until the conclusion of the series. And things aren't going so swimmingly on the Karen side of the fence. 
with Becca feeling that her mother picked her career over her at a critical time in her development in her young teenage years. And Karen has gone off to New York uh, to pursue a career opportunity when uh, Becca really needed her the most, so she's pretty alienated. Coming into season four, this is where there's a noticeable drop off in the amount of screen time, or rather the one-on-one -on -one interaction that she has with Hank, although she does get one of the best lines in the entire season. Pray sometimes, Dad. You know what I pray for the most? That I wake up one day and you've become a total bore. The kind of father who gets up every morning, puts on a suit and tie, drives to some lame office park, comes home at 5.30 on the dot, has a drink and hangs out with his fucking family. How hard would that have been for you, Dad? For the most part, her role in this arc is relegated in Hank's remembering of who he wants to be as a parent and as a person to Becca. Not the worst arc ever, but serviceable. Her dynamic with Hank takes an irreversible turn that they'd never quite recover from. In retrospect, the lingering betrayal that she feels regarding the Mia incident is a major factor in her cutting amount of life decisions in later seasons. Moving on to season 5, in the time jump, we are now presented with a grown-up Becca and all the trappings that come with it, namely Tyler. This is where we get to see more than ever the results of Hank's child-rearing method, as she's fallen in love with someone for all intents and purposes is just a younger version of her father, Daddy Issues Ahoy. Okay, now pause the track just for a second. Now, originally I wrote this with the idea that most fans would be happy with her being back into the fold, but after just, you know, just a second of going through all the hate mail that she got on the Reddit and just come different posts and stuff like that, maybe it makes sense that some of her screen time was greatly downscaled. So, all right, resume the video. While I, like many fans, was happy to see her getting much more screen time and brought back as a central character, her role was somewhat evolved from her father's anchor to a more constant and stern reminder that Hank is seemingly always fucking up. And I think that this is one area that really lost a lot of fans. One major complaint that I found repeatedly throughout the Californication subreddit and, and other places on the internet was that after a while, most people seem to think that Becca just came off as a whiny person. She just whined, she complained about everything, and they really thought, you know, it really brought the show down and really bent Hank's style. So a lot of people really didn't like that, which I can understand. So this is where the two diverging dynamics come to a head. With Becca at one point being essentially the pseudo parent figure to Hank and essentially his checks and balances throughout the series, to now coming into her own as an adult and dealing with the reckoning of her upbringing, leading to very awkward situations like Hank genuinely attempting to parent and give guidance to Becca in the ever classic, much too little, much too late scenario. After years of watching the self-destructive and at times unhinged behavior of her father, it is only natural that she would inevitably adapt portions of this persona for herself despite Hank's best intentions. So when he attempts things like this, you're not really thinking of driving, are you? Just finish off a whole bottle of wine. We can all see how this would be somewhat laughably hypocritical from a man that once did this. But if you thought we were drinking before, you're dead wrong because now <laughs> we are gonna do some drinking. You with me? So now we've arrived at the crux of what I deem to be the Becca issue, season six. Now let me pretense this by saying that there are worse fates for characters in serialized television than to be given little to no screen time or effectively bench for newer characters. I'd much rather this fate than a blatant character assassination as we've seen befall many beloved television characters over the years, or worse yet, peer meandering and pointless arcs that do nothing to service the character or narrative in any meaningful manner. Okay, so freeze frame again. You know, season six for me is definitely one of my favorites, right? And I think a lot of people like that a lot. And I'm just now putting the correlation together that probably the reason that a lot of people like season six is because Becca's not in it. Uh, that's kind of just came to me just there. Okay, snap back. But this time, it really just rubbed me the wrong way. Even in my most recent rewatch, it feels like they literally took the beating heart of the earlier seasons, that being Beck and Hank's dynamic, and gave up on any attempts to evolve it further in lieu of different storylines that were overall less engaging. I get that she's grown up now, and naturally Hank would cease to be quite a central figure in her life on such a consistent basis, and Hank's focus is redirected towards attempting to get Karen back in almost a singular manner. I just can't help but feel that having Becca put into more of a central role in the last two seasons would have helped accentuate a lot of what we loved about those earlier seasons. The heart and Hank's struggle in attempting to do right by his two ladies in his life. It seems that the show veered hard into the other elements Californication is known for, the over the top and crass humor. Which while I think this element has its place in the show, it's not what caused most of us to watch six seasons of this show. Moving on to season six, it's clear that they had absolutely zero idea what to do with Becca and she's largely sidelined throughout the majority of the season and has a very underwhelming arc in attempting to become a writer. This is handled in such a ham-fisted manner, but honestly, it could have been an exceptional character study doing more than just showcasing the surface layer of what it means to be a writer. 
We get hints of it, but it never truly blossoms into its clear potential. But honestly, this is just an issue with the way Season 6 is written, that it doesn't leave much time or energy to give this storyline the proper care it rightfully needs and deserves. And by the time Season 7 rolls around, Becca is completely benched for all but one episode, but I'll be damned if that one episode doesn't deserve an Emmy for Madeline Martin. As usual, she actually manages to call Hank on his bullshit regarding the Levi x Julia situation and completely eviscerates him regarding his trepidation towards attending her wedding. I cannot in good conscience endorse this shit, Becca. Got a lot of fucking nerve, Dad, after all the shit you've asked me to endorse over the years. That's fair. Fair enough. I come home with good news. Great news. The biggest news in my life. And I can't even get it out before I'm confronted with the wreckage of your fucking past. After all reading all the feedback regarding Becca and all the vitriol that was kind of spit towards her, I kind of understand why she was kind of sidelined for the last two seasons. But I think that was a missed opportunity to really give her some something to really work with, right? Like give her something like not a redemption arc, but give her something to make her character really, you know, shine. You know, a lot of other characters got their moment in the sun. I felt like they definitely could have done this with her. And I think the whole Hank and her trying to be writers and stuff like that, that was a brilliant premise that really had a lot of potential that they really admired for. So to sum it all up, when I think of Becca and her role within Californication, all I could think of is Miss Potential. Child actors can be a bit of a coin toss to write for, and there can be clear divides in what each party sees as a rightful evolution of the said character. In conclusion, leading up to season 6, I think that the writers had done a beyond competent job of keeping Hank and Becca's relationship as one of the key focuses in the show and evolving her character on an organic path. While season 6 is easily one of the best in the entire series, I can't help but feel that if they had went in another direction with Becca having more of a centralized role, the overall narrative would have been better in both seasons 6 and 7 whilst honoring the core of the original show's dynamic. But alas, such is life. And that'll do for this week's episode. Let me know what you think down in the comments, if you like or you hated Becca, and what did you guys want to see happen with her in the later seasons. As always guys, if you like the content, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what content you want to see next. LC signing out. Peace.